Hello, Ian in San Francisco, California. It is Matthew here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com coming to you all the way across country from Durham, North Carolina on the East Coast. And I'm going to cut 167 high index lenses with Transitions Gray and Crizal Avance for your Oakley Gasser frame that I'm taking out of the case that you sent them to me. Of course, that is again the Oakley Gasser 5087 and the color is 0553, the tumbled chrome. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and pop out your demo lenses. Of course, you're going to receive back all the manufacturer's original packaging that you sent to me. Because it's yours, but I would do it anyway even if you had bought them from me. And I'm going to trace your frame. Come on, why is it not tracing? Hang on, we got to override the last one. There we go. Now... Let's trace. The stylus is going to come up and it's going to trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic frame from me and you receive free clear single vision prescription lenses. However, since I don't sell Oakley, you mailed me your frame and I will cut lenses for you. In just a moment, your shape will pop up here onto the computer. Come on, pop. Pop for me, pop. <laughs> How much you got to spend for it? You know, this thing was $40,000. How much you got to spend to make it work faster? It wants to do it. There we go. That is the shape of your lens. In fact, if I bring it down to actual size, that's what it's going to be. But I always magnify when I'm working on it. Now, your pupillary distance. You tell me it's 31.5 in each eye. It automatically starts at 32.5. So I'm going to bring that down to 31.5. And let's go ahead and get your lenses prepped. These are your 167 with Transition 7 gray lenses and Crizal Avance. So let me make sure all this is in view. And let me go to work. Your right lens, of course, you're the same in both eyes. So I could use either of these. But once I put dots on them, we've got to keep them that way. So the axis for your right eye is 25 minus 550. Of course, again, take it out of the protective sleeve. And you actually a little laminate on top to prevent the, temp, uh, the fronts from rubbing together during shipping. So minus 550. Actually, let me zero this out and make sure we're perfect. We are. In fact, where's my little flashlight? Where's my flashlight? There we go. There's my flashlight. I'm going to put it on 550. And put your lens in and rotate it until oh, I actually got it fine. Let's go ahead and rotate and see what I can do till the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center of your lens and check your astigmatism correction. Everything looks good there. So I'm going to put three dots on your lens. Hopefully they're dark enough for you to see. I doubt it. So I'm going to take a pen and darken those even some more. And this is the right lens. I'm going to do the same thing now for the left, which is at 155. Turn that to, where's 155? There it is. Halfway between 150 and 160. Again, we're still on minus 550 power. Take it out, take the little lamin off there. Put that in there, rotate it again till the sphere power comes in clearly. And check your astigmatism correction. Let's get everything lined up a little bit better. Get that optical center dead center of the bullseye. Sorry, you want an anal guy like me cutting your lenses. I'm OCD when it comes to finding the exact dead center of your lens. Because in your prescription, it makes a difference. We're going to mark this one L, which stands for not right. So let's take everything back down here. Grab that, grab that. And, of course, you're going to get the lens sleeves to show that you are getting the Transition Signature 7 lenses, 167 lenses. And let's take your right lens. The reason why I put those dots on there, where's my stylus? Did I leave that down here? Come on, Matt, get organized. But these three dots that I put on your lenses, this tells me exactly where it needs to be oriented into your frame. So, that every, so you're going to see your best. So I'm going to put that there. That is your optical center now. The blue cross is the geometric center of the lens, but this is your optical center. 
and those two dots are even on the on that meridian so everything lines up perfectly I need a block this is a block this is what's going to attach to your lens while it is cutting so I need a double-sided adhesive sticker and I've already got some applied to these so the little silver button on the back is a magnet and I'll show you what that does it does two things for one it's going to hold it in place here in this arm and I'm going to use the stylus hit the button and the arm comes down and places the block onto your right lens let's move this over since that is the right what is the circumference of these 80 millimeters that's nice that is nice now again that mirrors the your pupillary distance from the right lens which is 31.5 if it were different I would change it be since you're the same in both eyes get everything lined up just perfectly that dot in the middle is going to be sitting directly in front of your pupil pull the piece of paper off this side to make this side of the sticker sticky hey what's brown and sticky a stick okay all right a bad <laughs> one free bad joke with every pair of glasses made i'm just kidding i'll throw in a lot of bad jokes you can't stop me what are you gonna do you're just gonna sit there and be tortured watching this video so the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right it's going to grind away your lens material when i'm done it's going to be a lot wider because the high index is a very gummy lens and that's what is on there that residue this wheel in the center with that little channel that valley that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays so i'm going to pull up the shape of your lens onto the computer and these are not polycarbonate lenses i'm going to put them on the high index feature these i'm going to cut it on the soft cycle one red star is fast but i'm going to cut these slow because the anti-glare coating that is the polish knob i do not want to polish just kidding Ian. all right they're going to be polished you win <laughs> and i'm not going to put a bevel on the front but i will put one on the back you see that that little shiny glimpse x means no polish that means yes we going to polish and let's go ahead and put the the lens into the chuck thank you chuck and hit the start button and the caliper is going to close the clamp making a sound because when it's right like that and then two white calipers are going to trace the shape of your lens going all the way around we can see that onto the computer screen measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so it fits best inside the frame and now the cutting wheel is starting up it's going to move over directly beneath the lens and in just a moment and you can see water splashing that's because high index cuts wet and this is the part i wish you could smell high index actually has some sulfur in it so right now it smells like rotten eggs lucky me but uh or a sulfur or just a really rotten smell <laughs> and uh so that is that again your lenses are the thin and light 167 high index transition 7 written out in roman numerals gy stands for gray with crisol avance now your lenses are the thinner much thinner than the regular polycarb that i usually work with it's aspheric meaning not only is it thinner it's a flatter lens you have the transitions which i'll demonstrate in a little bit but you also have crisol avance the anti-glare coating does three things the first feature is that it eliminates glare when driving at night particularly driving at night in the rain but also reduces glare from stoplights street lights computer screens overhead fluorescent lights that kind of thing the second feature it's an anti-reflection lens so when someone's looking at you they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses so it makes for much better eye contact Plus, if someone takes a picture of the flash, you won't see the flash lit up in your lens. You'll see just your eyes. And then the third feature that I like, the practical side, is it comes with the strongest scratch coating in the business. Now, if you notice, your lens is completely flat now, just like a nickel. If I were to take it out, it would stand up on the counter. But in just a moment, it's going to drop down on this wheel. And this is a good time. This is what your residue looks like that it comes out after it's been cut actually we'll do that at the very end we'll go behind the scenes because the high index is so gummy I have to empty the trap in between each lens I can cut about four or five pair of polycarbonate lens before I have to remove the optical sawdust if you will it's called Schwarf I remove that from the trap 
and discard it. I have to do that on every single one because the Hindex is so gummy, it actually clogs the filter and water will overflow. See how much extra work I gotta go through? Now the wheel on the left, which you never see used, that is the polishing wheel, which Ian, you get to see in action tonight. Because you tell me you gotta have it, I tried to talk you out of it. Well, at least I told you my opinions on it, I didn't try and talk you out of it. Now it's going on to the polish wheel. But you like that feature? My only concern is because you have the anti-glare coating, it eliminates glare from the front and the back. When you're letting glare in through the sides, you say that's okay, you can live with that. Hey, you're the boss. You tell me how you want your lens done and I'm going to do it that way. So now this lever is coming out. This is, it looks like a Dremel wheel. It's actually gonna put the safety bevel on the back surface of the lens to remove any roughness that could be left over from the cutting cycle. All right, in just a moment, this door will open. I will take your lens out. Let me grab a paper towel to dry everything off so it's not slippery. Hit the button to open up the chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Dry everything off. How's that for a polished lens? Does that look okay? And where's my screwdriver? I'm going to, oops, got some water on the back of my hand. OCD, you gotta have dry hands when working on someone else's equipment. Loosen that screw. And let's go ahead and get that right lens popped in. Get everything lined up where it's supposed to be. And now let's tighten the screw back. Now you have a slight gap right there. I don't like that. So let me take it down a tenth of a millimeter until that is flush. I should not be able to get my fingernail in there just due to the thickness of the lens and it being thicker than the original demo lens. So I'm going to pop that out, put it back in the machine. This is going to take a while because again it's going to polish which is one extra step but I'm going to take it down one tenth of a millimeter and hit retouch and while it's doing that here is the thing. This is the residue from your lens that is so gummy. I've got to clean that out so it does not overflow that trap. And it's going back to the polish wheel and it's just going to take it down a tenth of a millimeter. And to all my American friends, a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that distance off going around the circumference of your lens until it mounts into your frame perfectly. The other nice feature about the anti-glare lens, it means it's a hydrophobic coating, meaning you never need a liquid cleaner again, like this. A lot of people sell, which is this much alcohol and that much water. Your hydrophobic coating it literally translates to hating water. It's not going to damage it, but it's just like when you wax your car and it rains, the water beads right off. Any liquid is going to do the same thing to your lens. So, of course, your Oakley bag is a cleaning cloth, but I'm also going to provide one of my own. And just, this is all you ever have to use. This is what I use to clean my lenses. And since I've got it in my hands, I like to remind everyone that I also include instructions on how to care for your cleaning cloth and your case so it will last you for years as well as your eyeglasses naturally. But you'll have two. This is a microfiber cleaning cloth as well as the one that I will be providing for you. And of course I also throw in a photo request to have your picture on the website. And at the bottom of your emails it tells me that you do 
Malaysian inspired food from a bike cart and I would love to have your picture with you at the cart serving food that would be awesome okay so I got your lens in there again let's tighten that screw down and make sure it is a flush fit this time you know, let me back the screw all the way out and start again why are you giving me problems why are you giving me problems make sure the bevel is in there perfectly there we go there we go and there that is flush I cannot get my fingernail in there that is perfect so let's flip this over and we're gonna cut the left lens hit that button and let's do the same thing put it in and then hit the start button just like before the clamp closes a little quieter this time since that seal is wet it's gonna come up and those two white calipers are gonna trace the shape of your lens the left lens and the reason why there's two calipers is it's measuring the thickness of the lens going all the way around to know exactly where to place that bevel so that your lens fits best inside the frame and you barely have any edge thickness there since we did upgrade you to the 167 high index lenses and of course it's the best of both worlds you get a polished lens but you barely see any lens protruding from the frame the thickest point is up here in the corner and your temple blocks most of that thickness so that will help eliminate glare as well coming in through the sides in a semi rimless frame or other ones it would show more but not in this one so I'm going to remove this block dry everything off I'm going to leave that red dot on there in fact I might just make it darker so we can measure your pupillary distance in just a moment let's go ahead and darken that dot so you can see that later on I'm going to spin the axis wheel back to 25 put it in my lensometer and I cannot see where I'm stopping at while I look in the viewfinder and we're at minus 550 and now you have 0.75 of astigmatism correction which gives us six and a quarter the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter spelled d-i-o-p-t-e-r and goes in quarter increments starting at zero and going up in quarters 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 1 until we get to 550 5 times 4 is 20 so you need 22 steps of correction without your glasses on things are way too large now you can see up close great but once it gets beyond arm's reach things start to get blurry so you need 22 steps of correction to correct for your farsightedness to get everything the correct size you need three additional steps to take away fuzzy edges so you're actually at 25 steps and the 25 just turn tells us where to turn that fine tune knob this first number makes everything the right size you have 0.3 steps of astigmatism correction now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism it just means shape you have two curvatures you have one curvature going this way with 22 steps of correction you have another curvature going this way with three steps of correction for a combined 25 steps of correction this is why you squint this is why sixes and eights look alike or p's and f's so we're going to turn if this were a knob we're going to turn that knob to 25 for your left eye you have the same power in your left eye which is rare but we're going to turn that knob past 90 degrees to about 155 with 0 to 180 being a straight line these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with this last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180 so where's my flashlight where to go where to go it's down here down here and the reason why we ended up with six and a quarter remember high school algebra you add two of the same signs together but let me put it in today's terms if somebody had already borrowed five dollars and fifty cents and then they borrowed another 75 cents from you you they would owe you six dollars and 25 cents so we're at six and a quarter so that comes out perfectly there the nice thing about your prescription you would probably be 50 or higher before you would need bifocals because you are so nearsighted we call bifocals the 40-year virus. You will not have to worry about it until you're well above 50 more than likely. And the other nice thing, if you have small glasses on, you can actually look under your glasses. Of course, you can't see what I'm doing. But instead of looking through your lenses, if you look under them, 
you can actually postpone it even longer before you will need a bifocal. So you got that going for you. That's one nice thing about your prescription. You never thought your prescription would benefit you, but this is one case that it does. And you see how the water beads right off? That's what the anti-glare coating does to your lens. Just remember to periodically wash this cloth because instead you're just cleaning with a dirty rag at that point. Here's that. That's what I'm looking for. Dry your lens off so it's not slippery. Again, it's always embarrassing when you drop someone's lens on live TV, so I, I ain't going to do it. Uh-uh. Wouldn't be prudent. Look at that polished edge. Nice and polished for you. All the way around, in fact. That's the side that anyone's going to see. So let me grab your frame. Where did I leave it? Down here? Did I do that again? So let me loosen this side. And we'll check to make sure that your left lens fits perfectly. If not, I'll take it down a little bit more. Make sure that's mounted in there perfectly. And it is. Tighten the screw back, and that fits perfect. So let's go ahead and take this block off. Hey, let go of that last one. Dry everything again, and I'm going to go down and measure just over that red dot, and let me darken that again. I'm going to put that in my Marco 101 lensometer, my very dusty Marco 1 lensometer. I need to turn the axis wheel to 155. That is that knob we turn, that fine tune knob. And where's my woohoo? I'm making a mess. Making a mess here. Where's my flashlight? Again, I'm gonna take a break axis as it's called, and I stop at minus 550. Turn again. Of course, you can't see that, can you? Turn again till I get your stigmatism correction, and we're at six and a quarter. So that is made perfectly as well. Your pupillary distance is 31.5 in both eyes for a combined value of 63. I'm gonna turn this around. I'm going to place the PD stick on my thumb against your right lens. And when I hold it up to the left, we're getting 63 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. Even though these are your frames, I still want to do one thing. And I would like to mention at this point in the video that when you get these, there's a small chance that these will be too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. And that's why 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments regardless of where you purchase them at. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. I take mine off and I press down on the counter. They wobble. Yours ain't gonna. So I flip them over, press down. There is no wobble. I make sure the tension is the same on the spring hinges. There are. The temples overlap perfectly, and they do. Now, this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate. See how your lenses minify when I hold them up over the letters of, the, of my name, the website? The lenses get much smaller, or the print gets much smaller as this moves over. But this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to put them in my little transitions unit here in the corner, which is just a strong UV light. And as you will see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for the lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute. Come on, stand up there straight. Stand up straight. Those Oakleys. Um, yeah, a minute to a minute 15 to return all the way back to clear. Now this is important. Ian, pay attention. All transition lenses get dark on day one. Give them two weeks so they're gonna, of exposure to the sun on clear days. Not cloudy, but two weeks, and they're going to keep getting darker and darker every day for the first two weeks till they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is if you're behind the windshield in a traditional car. They will turn dark in a convertible or a motorcycle, but your windshield in a traditional car stops all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays from making your dashboard crack. That's why transitions don't work in a car. So... That is the first time they've been activated. And again, they will continue to darken. Remember, Ian, come on, we talked about this. But that's that. If anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Ian, I hope you enjoyed watching as I made lenses. 167 high index lenses with Transition 7 and Crizal Avance with polished edges. <laughs> you know, I'm just messing with you, dude. Um, 
But that's it, and hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.